Howdy everyone! Today we're going to talk a little bit about how animals deal with being cold. There are a lot of different types of animals out there. There's endothermic animals, um, animals that get their heat from within. We call those warm-blooded animals, so endotherms. Warm-blooded animals are getting the warmth from within. Then we also have ectotherms, our reptiles, our cold-blooded animals like fish and sea turtles and, and lizards and things like that. So let's first talk about reptiles. So our cold-blooded organisms, cold-blooded means they're getting their heat from external. It's ectothermic, external environment. So they can get their heat from the sun or the surrounding water around them. So there's a lot of different types of animals that can kind of live in those colder climates like the deep sea. And so like fish and sharks, they, their body temperature is the same as their outside environment. So the same as the water. So some deep sea fish will actually have t a type of antifreeze in their blood that allows their blood not to freeze in those cold, deep water habitats. Now reptiles, like our lizards and snakes and sea turtles, will actually be able to sunbathe. They'll be able to get some rays from the sun. You'll see reptiles hanging out and sitting on a warm rock or anything like that out of the... Um, out of their cool environment, out of the shade. They want to have that direct sunlight so they can warm up their body. Some will even burrow underground or hibernate so they can keep all the warmth to the core of their body and they can kind of hide out until it gets warm enough for them to go outside. So that's how cold-blooded animals will be able to survive. Warm-blooded animals like mammals, marine mammals, have also ways of dealing with the cold as well. So we as humans, if we're cold, what's the first thing we do? That's right, we put on more clothes. We can put on jackets and hats and sweaters, especially hats, because you lose 25% of your body heat just from your head. So you want to make sure you get that noggin covered, right? But we can put on more clothes, we can snuggle up by the fire, we can drink hot chocolate to make sure that our core body temperature is still warm. But did you know there's some things that our body does without even telling us to stay warm? One thing that you might do is you might get goosebumps whenever you're cold. There's a muscle right underneath each hair that will make your hair stand straight up and give you goosebumps. And this really doesn't help us as humans out a lot, but for animals like polar bears or um, raccoons or any, or even your dog or cat at home, these fluffy animals, it makes that hair stand straight up and trap some more of that heat in. So you might notice if your uh, cat or dog go outside, they'll get like extra fluffy whenever they're outside because those hairs will go straight up and it's from adrenaline that will make those hairs go straight up. It's really cool. We also will shiver right? So whenever you're shivering, your muscles are kind of contracting and they're moving and that actually will help you warm your bodies, especially your extremities like your arms and your hands and keep that core warmth to the center where your heart is because that's the whole goal. You want to make sure your heart stays warm, right? So all your extremities will just tense up and it'll make this movement that will cause this uh, this energy that will cause heat and it will move to your core. So that's some simple ways that we as humans will actually contain our heat. Marine mammals deal with the cold because they have to dive for their food. And diving into that cold water can be really cold. So there's a lot of different types of animals that um, will have adaptations like blubber. So like our walruses, our narwhals, our, our beluga whales, they have this big dense layer of blubber and that allows them to keep all of their warmth to their core, right? So if you've ever seen pictures of walruses before and after they get out of the water, if they're on the surface and they've been there for a long time, you'll notice that orange, pink color of their skin that you normally think of when you think of a walrus. But after a walrus has been diving down in the water and looking for food, his body will actually be gray when it comes out of the water. What happens is they shunt all their blood to their core as they're going. They don't want to lose all of that blood or blubber. Think about you when you're running a race. You're running and like if you're like me, my face gets really red. 
That's because all the blood, all the um, all my blood vessels are shunting heat at the surface of my skin and makes my face really, really red. It looks like I just ran a whole marathon if I've just ran around the block. But it's really red because it's shunting all of that heat off of my face. Walruses will do the same thing, but the opposite. They'll move all the blood, all those blood vessels will constrict and keep the heat close to their core. So whenever they're on the surface, basking in the sun, their skin's all red, they're absorbing heat, as much heat as they possibly can. They'll go down into the ocean and they'll be looking and kind of skiing on the bottom with their tusks, looking for food. And once they're done and they come out of the water, they'll be gray. So it's really cool, a really cool adaptation for them to be able to keep all the core heat to the center. We also have animals like uh, sea otters and polar bears that have very dense fur. And this very dense fur will trap a layer of air and that allows them to be able to keep this heat. And so they have to constantly groom. Sea otters will spin about 25% of their day just grooming themselves, making sure that they have air bubbles all aerated in their, in their uh, fur. So it's very important for them to be able to have that layer of insulation, that air layer. Another animal that will trap an air layer is actually penguins. Now penguins aren't marine animals, they're marine birds, but they are warm blooded. So they live in Antarctica and Antarctica is really cold. So some things that penguins do is one, they'll huddle up all together in this big old like huddle of penguins and snuggle up together. That way they can keep all their heat into one area. They also have pores in their feathers that will trap air. And this also helps them to insulate. Now, another thing that penguins do to make sure that they don't get that cold, icy water or freeze their feathers is they actually will secrete oil onto their feathers. They have an oil gland at the base of their tail. So if you've ever seen penguins at the aquarium and they're kind of moving their tail back and forth, um, they are actually secreting oil. Then what they'll do is they'll take their beak and they'll rub that oil all across their body and be able to protect their feathers. We are actually going to get to do an experiment right now to see if we can repel water using a little bit of the same strategy that penguins do to keep their feathers dry. What you'll need for this experiment slash craft is our penguin printout. You can print it out on regular paper or cardstock. Some crayons, whatever colors you want. A spray bottle, and if you want, some food coloring. What we're going to do is we're actually going to color this penguin. Now, if you know anything about crayons, crayons have wax in them. And so we're going to create a waxy layer, just like the penguins will create an oily layer on their feathers to see if we can repel this water. It doesn't matter what color your penguin is, just as long as the entire surface is covered. So this is Fred, my penguin. And once we have colored our penguin completely with crayon, right, we can take our spray bottle or our ocean. And if you're gonna put blue dye in there, um, just make sure you only put a couple drops, uh, that way that it doesn't get too strong. So all we're going to do is we're going to spray it. And you can see the water repel. So you can see the difference if I spray the paper normally and if I spray the penguin. All these water beads that are beating up and falling off, they're the penguin repelling that water. <laughs> the only place that it's standing are the places on the borders that it didn't color. So that's a good point as well. So whenever you're coloring, make sure you color the borders as well, or you're gonna have a space where the penguin is going to uh, leak water through. So all that water is being repelled just like the penguins whenever they're putting oil on their feathers.